Okay guys, in this video I will discuss about different type of CRTAB connection and their merits and demerits. Okay, so before starting the video, if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. So at the very first, if you are a beginner, in that case, definitely you should know what is CR connection. Okay, so it's very simple. If you have ever considered any simply supported beam, and if you know how under the action of any type of transverse load the simply supported beam behave in that case you know that the support are considered as pinned support okay and what is the speciality of this pinned support there is only shear force there is no such bending moment okay in real life to construct this pinned support you need to take a help of a type of connection which is known as shear connection right still if you want to study in depth about the shear connection and moment connection you can go to the description there i have provided the link of this video where i have discussed about the shear connection and moment connection okay by the way there are two type of shear connection first one is known as beam to column and second one is beam to beam now this is time to discuss about each of them first is beam to column okay so this is a very typical example of beam to column connection first look at this picture okay so this is the column and this is our beam we need to make sure that this connection is pin connection that means there is no such bending moment and you know that in any beam especially in i section the bending moment are being carried by the flanges okay so if you want to eliminate the bending moment at this support what you have to do simply you cannot connect the flange with the column so here you can see there is no connection between the flange okay here only we have connected the wave part by the means of a plate which is known as shear tab okay so this is the flange of the column and this is the wave of the beam and we have simply connected this wave of the beam with this plate by using some bolt and then we have simply welded the plate with the column flange if you look into the picture here you can see that this is the flange of the column and here this is the web of the beam and the shear tab or the plate is not visible this is in another side here you can only see the bolt okay but you can see that the plate has been welded with the column flange okay you can also connect this beam with the wave of the column here you can see that this is the beam and we have connected again the wave by using bolt with the shear tab or plate then we have welded the plate with the wave of column this is the typical example wave has been connected with the plate by using this bolt then the plate has been welded with the column web very simple and very clear okay now this is time to discuss about the beam to beam connection okay normally let's say this is a frame structure this is the plan of the frame structure okay this is the column this is the column and this is another column column now consider this is the primary beam you have two primary beam now let's say you have three secondary beam what normally we do we connect this secondary beam with this primary one through pin connection or you can say shear connection okay so here you can see that this is the primary beam and this is the secondary beam and we have connected this secondary beam with this primary beam by using a shear connection okay now to construct a shear connection in between this primary beam and secondary beam you have two option okay first one is you can simply bring together this primary beam and this secondary beam and then you extend this shear tab or this plate to reach up to the web part of this beam because due to this flange length you cannot bring the web part near to the web of this beam or this primary beam so what you have to do you have to simply extend this 
CR tab or this plate up to this point, okay, to reach up to the web of the secondary beam, okay. And second option is, well, you can simply use a shorter plate or CR tab, but in that case, to reach up to the web of the primary beam, what you have to do? You have to bring closer this secondary beam web by cutting the top flange, in some cases the bottom flange also. Now in both the cases there is some problem, okay. So first consider this one, what is the problem, okay. So here you can see that we have not cut any flanges, okay. The flanges are intact, okay. To reach up to this web, what we have done? We have simply extend the plate, okay. The plate is fixed here. So we have considered a fixed support and the load from this secondary beam is being transferred at this location. So here is the reaction, okay. So due to this extended part, there is a considerable lever arm. And due to this reactive force, let us say this is P, if we multiply with this lever arm L, we will get a moment here that is P times L. So due to this extended part or extended lever arm, we are getting a moment at this support for which we need to design this shear tab. Not only that, let us say in plan this is the primary beam and this is the secondary beam okay so this is the bolt line and let's say here we have some lateral force this is the plan okay so this is the lateral load so due to this lateral load also we will have some moment here because this is fixed due to this weld so in this tab we will have two moment first one is due to this extended lever arm and this shear force and second one due to this lever arm and the horizontal force okay so if the magnitude of this moment is quite large in that case you may not be able to sustain the moment both the primary and secondary moment by using this tab okay so in that case what is the solution well keep the tab smaller just like this one, but bring the web part of this primary beam closer to this secondary beam web by simply cutting the flange. Sometime you may have to cut both the flange when if the depth of this secondary beam is same to the primary beam, okay. In that case, you have to cut both the flanges to bring the web of the secondary beam closer to this primary beam, okay. So this is the secondary beam, okay. Now what is the problem here? The problem is here you can see now the reaction is coming here and the lever arm is very negligible. So your tab is safe, okay. So the tab is safe. Now let us say this is the primary beam and this is the secondary beam. This is another primary beam. So these are the pin connection, okay. So this pin connection is nothing but this pin connection. So let's say there is another pin connection here, right. And in this beam, let's say we have some uh, loading like this. So due to this loading, what will happen? We will have some bending moment like this. Okay, so here you can see that at a distance from this support, we are getting some amount of bending moment. It is greater than zero, it is not zero. And this location is nothing but this coped location. Okay, so here there is some bending moment, but there is no such flange. You know that in I section, the bending moment are being carried mainly by the flanges, right. But here there is bending moment but there is no such flange. At the top here 
in some cases both at the top as well as in the bottom then what you have to do simply you have to manually check the capacity of this wave only whether this wave is sufficient or not to carry this amount of bending moment okay here the wave is actually acting like a plate okay so that's it if you like this video don't forget to share it